Hi, it's me, Candace DeLong. I want to tell you about my new podcast called Killer Psyche Daily. It's a bite-sized version of the weekly that gives you a quick 10-minute rundown every weekday on the motivations and behaviors of the criminal masterminds, psychopaths, and cold-blooded killers you read about in the news. I'm about to play you a clip from the show. I will also drop one of these every other week on this feed. So if you don't do it now, I'll keep reminding you to follow the Amazon Music exclusive podcast, Killer Psyche Daily, in the Amazon Music app. A listener note, this episode contains adult content and is not suitable for everyone. Please be advised. Since the news of an arrest in the Long Island serial killer case broke, we've come across many shocking updates about the suspect, Rex Hewerman. My producer, Julie, spoke with legal analyst Josh Ritter about the tell-all bail application that recently went public. Today, you'll hear them dive deeper into Hewerman's charges and the evidence against him. From Wondery and Tree Fort Media, I'm Candace DeLong. Today is July 27th, and this is Killer Psyche Daily. Hi, Josh. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Let's talk about the case that's bringing a huge amount of attention to true crime, uh, which is the Gilgo Beach murders. So just tell us, first of all, what is a bail application and who fills it out? Yeah, so this application was filed by the district attorney's office in New York. And what's interesting about it is usually a bail um, application or a bail motion is a fairly simple and straightforward request by the DA's office where they lay out perhaps the bare bones facts of a case, along with some particulars about the defendant themselves, so that the judge can do an assessment of two things, essentially. One, the threat or possible threat to the public, and two, whether or not that person can be considered a flight risk. And weighing those two factors a judge will uh, determine whether or not bail is appropriate. This case stands out as being a little bit different because one, the DA's office, the prosecutor is asking for no bail. So they're asking that the judge not set any amount, meaning that Hewerman will be kept in custody without any opportunity to be released before the trial of this case. The other thing that's very interesting about it is that it's incredibly detailed and extensive. And they did this so that the judge could understand the magnitude of the crimes, the complexity of them, the planning that went into them. But I think, too, a lot of this could have been done in a much simpler and uh, more straightforward manner. But with a case that has, like you pointed out, received the amount of media attention that this case has, I think it was also an opportunity for the prosecutors to highlight some of the evidence that they had against Hewerman and get that out in front of the public. In the bail document, there are two charges for just three of the women of the Gilgo Beach murders. There's a murder in the first degree and a murder in the second degree for each victim that he's being charged with. Why those two charges? Why not just murder in the first degree? That's an interesting question, and it's understandable why it might cause some confusion for folks when they first take a look at it. And it really depends on each jurisdiction, but this is what's called charging in the alternative. In some jurisdictions where I practice in Los Angeles, California, oftentimes they will just charge first degree because if there is evidence presented at trial that might warrant the instruction on a lesser degree, second degree manslaughter, that instruction can be given later on to the jury. But here in New York, for reasons particular to their jurisdiction, they've decided to go ahead and charge those 
three additional second degree counts in what's called in the alternative. And basically what they're doing is covering all their bases. They're saying that they believe this is a premeditated murder. But if for whatever reason um, that is called into question or jurors have a problem uh, with the idea of the malice of forethought and premeditation required for first degree, then they can default to essentially second degree and the uh, prosecutor's office in New York has already charged him with those crimes. There's a lot of speculation that Hewerman is also responsible for the deaths of many other people. Are they hedging their bets as well to only charge him with these three? Well, first, even in the bail application itself, it identifies a fourth victim, a Miss Brainerd Barnes, that they specifically name as being a person that he is the chief suspect in. And they have not articulated in the bail application why it is that that victim has not been actually charged, but they do outline some of the evidence that is pointing towards Hewerman for her murder as well. What I think, and this is me taking an educated guess here, is that authorities and law enforcement had been watching Hewerman for some time. He was under surveillance. He had been identified as a suspect and they were watching him. That was one of the ways in which they were able to recover the now infamous pizza box with the pizza crust that they were able to tie his DNA to one of the crime scenes. In their surveillance, he was seen purchasing another or multiple burner phones. And based upon his MO that they believed from these prior crimes, that was a buildup for him before he would target another victim and commit another murder. And I think law enforcement wanted to act before there was any other danger to the community. And because of that, I'm not saying that they were any kind of rush to make an arrest, but I think that it might be an indication that there is perhaps still an ongoing investigation, in particular as it regards to Ms. Brainerd Barnes and perhaps even regards to other bodies that were located in that same vicinity. If they do decide to add the charges, would they add them into the same case or would they hold on to those charges in case something happens and he doesn't get convicted in this trial. I imagine that they will add those charges as, as soon as they feel that they have enough evidence to charge him with those crimes. I understand the thinking behind perhaps you keep some of these in the wings, but I think that they realize that they have a strong enough case against him now with the three murders that are already alleged and that it will only make their case stronger to go ahead and add more of these. There's also the added legal issue of if you have investigations and you don't add them, and there is a resolution in the, God forbid, scenario where he is acquitted of these, that that could lead to them being unable to charge him with other crimes if they felt that they were overall related to the criminal scheme that was involved in these crimes. Is the death penalty available in this state? The state of New York does not have the death penalty. So what he's looking at here would be consecutive life without parole sentences. So since it's not a death penalty case, do we expect this to go to trial soon? I don't think it will go to trial soon because of the complexity of it. And because he's still looking at the remainder of his life in prison, I imagine his defense team, who has not been identified as of yet, will want as much time as they can to prepare. This isn't the type of situation where you sometimes see the defense wanting to keep the pressure on the prosecution because they feel that the prosecution hasn't pieced their case together enough and there might be some advantage to catching them off guard with a quick trial. This is a case where the defense is playing a large amount of catch up because there has been a significant amount of investigation done before now. Everything that we're seeing in this bail application talks about investigations that go back for a couple of years at least. So the defense is now just starting to receive some of these reports and information. I imagine it will take them a fair amount of time to even just catch up to where the prosecution is at. 
I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more about this in the weeks to come. Josh, thank you as always. We appreciate your knowledge and expertise. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It's Thursday, and you know what that means. It's time for you to test your true crime knowledge. Today, I'll ask you the question, and tomorrow, we'll uncover the answer together. Here's this week's question. What did a concerned driver see hanging from the trunk of a car that prompted her to call 911 and report a potential kidnapping? Think you know the answer? Find out if you're right on tomorrow's episode of Killer Psyche Daily. Hey, Prime members, if you want to listen to more episodes of Killer Psyche Daily, sign in to the Amazon Music app with your Prime account and follow Killer Psyche Daily. If you're not a Prime member, you can listen to the show by subscribing to Amazon Music Unlimited in the Amazon Music app.